where are the Christians? Come on here. The, where, 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 where are the sons and the daughters of God? Mm -hmm. But the firstborn of many brethren, where's the brethren at? Oh, y'all getting quiet. Because sometimes I come to churches, these are sons of God. My God, well, I've been switch churches. Come on here. Amen. Where are they? Because we're supposed to become the reflection, I'll get into that, of God, but we will reproduce by the word of God himself that produce. Amen. God kind of people who walk in the God kind of life but don't have the knowledge that we need to understand what we are walking in. Dr. Miles Monroe said this, if you don't know the value of a thing, whatever it is, you will abuse it. So I never get upset now when I understand people don't know the value of who I am. Oh, my Shia. And they will abuse you. Oh, my Shia. And that's why it's important that you know your own value. That you know who you are. The song says, I know who I am. You got to know who you are. Come on, kid. If you don't know the value of this man, you will abuse him. If you don't know the value of this woman, you will abuse her. It's time for you to learn the value of what the gifts that God has set is quiet up in here in your midst. So if you don't know the value of your salvation in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 said, know this, but we have this treasure, this thing of high value. I ain't gonna get past this. We have this, uh, this incorruptible seed that's been planted into our spirit that has produced something that's See, the seed seems worthless, but it's very valuable. The thing about the seed is you got to put the seed in the right place. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm talking about. Even in producing and procreating, it's not going to be no reproduction in marriage. Let's make that clear. Unless the seed is put in the right place. That's why the Bible said he got angry with that young man. I was supposed to marry his brother's sister because he put a seed. Y'all don't want me to talk in the wrong place. Oh, come on, y'all. But that seed has been planted in your unregenerated spirit and produced what we call a treasure. Somebody say a treasure. That treasure is an earthen vessel. Somebody say jars of clay. Uh, that the excellency of the power, somebody say the power may be of God and not of ourselves. So for our summary today, it's revealing to us that we were born again by the incorruptible seed of God's word, which in the book of John tells us that that word literally was God himself. And so that incorruptible seed, which according to the law of the seed in Genesis will produce, it's got to be productive. Come on here. Come on here. It's got to reproduce. Come on here. It's got to be productive. It's got to have good ground. It can't fall on just any kind of ground. The reason why we've got weak saints is because the word is not falling on the right ground. That ground's got to be cultivated. That ground got to be developed. It's got to be fertilized for that seed to take root. Oh, y'all, and it will produce. Somebody say it will produce love. It will produce long suffering. It will produce peace. It will give you joy. Oh, help me. It will give you character. It will give you in integrity. Because it reproduces at its own kind. <laughs> it reproduces Christ. <laughs> I'm not going to get through this today. That's what Paul said. Is something been reproduced or reproduction in me. So it's no longer I, but it's Christ. Oh, my Shia. Somebody say it's Christ. God help me where I'm at right now. It's no longer me, but it's Christ. It's Christ in me. Somebody say it's Christ in me. I just want to know, is he really in you? It's Christ in me. Guess what? He's the hope of glory. Uh, it's Christ in me that gives me strength. I got to get out of this. It's Christ in me that changes the way that I walk. It's Christ inside of me. I don't know how y'all get away with it, but God won't let me get away with nothing. Christ inside of me, along with the Holy Spirit, keeps pulling me in check. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When I would come on here, do wrong, he 
holds me in check. Uh, it's not about the evil that's around me. It's about the power of the life force that's inside of me that keeps me walking circumspectly up before God. There is a greater power that Jesus is talking about when he said greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in the world. There's something greater than the power of the devil that's trying to overcome you. There's something greater in you than the demons that are coming up against you. There's something greater than the enemies that surround you. It's Christ. Ah, you don't even have to have the Holy Ghost. It's Christ inside of you. It's something inside of me that won't let me give up. It's Christ inside of me that makes me hold on when I will give up it's Christ inside of me when I fall down that makes me get up so I said Christ we, we gotta go preach in Christ again it's Christ inside of me the hope look at that pretty baby the hope of glory man I got hope man I wish I had some water I would throw it out on all of y'all. Because you need shock treatment. Because you lost your hope. You sit up here looking at me like you cuckoo for cocoa puffs. And all this hope is down inside of you. I'm changing this message. Say something has changed in my life. There's been a reproduction. I didn't even know what happened. But as I got that seed of God's word. And it got rooted in my spirit. And it got watered by prayer and consecration. Something began to happen inside of me. There became a transformation even in my mind. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I begin to stop being conformed to this world and slowly God transform my mind until I don't think the way I used to think. I don't see things the way I used to see things. I don't even talk the way I used to talk. I don't walk the way I used to walk. There's been a wonderful change. mind got renewed by the recreated spirit the regenerated spirit I'm talking about abundant life I'm going to do a series so I'm going to take my time I'm almost done and my mind is transformed by this supernatural spirit that I've been rebirthing it's not just there hi mama for, to make me shout but it's here to change me Mm. Oh, y'all getting quiet up in here. It's not there to just make me feel good. It's transforming me. Mm. I feel I'm changing. I'm in office. I'm changing. Is anybody there? And then I'm looking at the church. Do you even see that I'm going through minimum office? That I'm changing. That I'm transforming. I'm not talking about a movie, but I'm transforming right in front of your face. Come on here. And what he needs you to know is that he's transforming right in front of your eyes but what he needs is a people that will allow themselves to transform with him because you can't go with him if you don't change that's when it gets quiet you just change it I feel it when you, when you start changing you start feeling it I started walking. I started talking. I started living. Boy, it's quiet up in here. I started changing. I started transforming into something new. It's a work. An inward work that will soon manifest. Somebody say the seed is reproducing after its own kind. Amen. Zoe, life, mean the God kind of life. I don't want to get into all Genesis. Amen. Don't go there. Later, maybe the original purpose of God when he created man. God, so you got to teach this. The original purpose of God when he created man and the purpose of your rebirth. You hear me? Was for man to live forever. That's why salvation brings eternal 
existence with God. Because the original intention of God was for you to live forever. When Adam was created, he said he created him in his image, in his likeness. Are y'all here? He created Adam into him a typology. Everybody say typology of himself. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? And then he planted him in the garden. You know what he did before? Can I teach you something quick? He made, when he spoke in creation, everything was in place for Adam. And then when Adam came, Adam was put in place. Keep that in your mind. Everything, uh, first Peter said, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of his son, he's already provided everything for you that you're looking for. But that thing is wrapped up in position. Position is the point or place that's occupied by an individual thing. You know why I got healed and started rising up and resurrecting life? Because I got back in position. Come on, look at somebody and say, you better get back in position. When, they, when you out of position, come on here, everything, uh, Adam was there. Uh, uh, before Adam got there, everything was waiting for Adam. The sea was in the earth. The fish was, come on, under the sea. But even the sea that was in the ground couldn't sprout. The rain couldn't come till Adam come. Okay, come on. Listen, why? Why is that? Because God, amen, will not bless anything that is not properly managed. Oh, y'all don't want y'all want me to scream, but I don't feel like screaming. Come on, that's well, why ain't I'm getting blessed. God ain't blessing nothing unless it's properly managed. What's growing in your life? You got to take care of your garden. You got to take care of your life. You got to take care of your soul and your spirit. Oh, y'all hear the Bible said the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. waiting. I've got a message today. I ain't going to go farther. I'll be back. Everything's waiting for you, Adam. This teaching is getting good to me. I come tell you something. You're looking all over the place, trying to find out where everything's at and what, why ain't, nothing ain't happening because everything's waiting for you. Everything's waiting for you to get in your place. Everything waiting for you to walk into your inheritance. Everything is waiting for you to get the spirit of excellence uh -oh, and order and protocol and structure. Everything's waiting for you to get yourself together. It's not that God is not. He's taking it away from you. He got it on hold. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said? And he's waiting for you. Come on here so you can manage this thing. God will not give you anything that you can't handle. He will not bless anything that you, he won't give you anything I'm about done for today. That's why your life, your spiritual life is the most important part of your success. Am I talking good? You, you, you think it's, and you got to educate yourself because I believe in education. But that's why I love people who are educated and who still spiritual. Because you're living in an educated society. Uh, I'm going to get thrown off now. You got to go get, you can't do, Pastor Lester Pioneer, that was 50 years ago. This is the millennium. You ain't, you going to pastor somebody, you got to get educated. And I still have to be spiritual. Are y'all hearing me? And so Adam, he's waiting. Everything, as I close today, is waiting on you. That's why vision is so important because it's got to be vision. Without a vision, the people perish. Adam, you got to have a vision. You got to have the mind of God. You can't come down here and manage all this without God's mind. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Am I talking good? Sir? You can't manage your life without God's mind. Some of y'all is a nervous wreck. Because you're trying to do this without God's mind. You can't even figure out your bills without God's mind. You don't even know what to do with your money. You need God's mind. You got to get God in everything. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm talking about. You got to 
gotta stop shutting God out and get God in everything. You gotta get look at somebody and tell them you gotta get God in everything. Amen. So you can somebody say so I can handle it. I'm gonna close for the day so I can handle it. So now how does he handle it? Are y'all all right? How does he handle it by reflection? He handles it by reflection. What are you reflecting? See, let me tell you a secret. I teach, I'm about to teach some old stuff. Environment will cause you to reflect the wrong thing. That's why environment is so important. And that's why he cancels out the old and said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He said, old things. Oh, y'all quiet. Old things have got to pass away in order for all things to become new. In other words, even when talking about going into the things of God, talking about the possession of the promised land, something or somebody, that's a, I had a message, somebody got to die. If God's going to live, if we're going to occupy the things of God, somebody got to die. And I hate to tell it to you. Somebody say, you talking about going to die? I'm talking about die to your own will. They don't teach this stuff. Die to your own way. Come on, die to your own systems. Die to the old environment that have shaped the way that you think, that have shaped the way that you do things, that shape your relationships, your ability to have a relationship or not have a relationship. It has caused you to be attracted by the law of attraction to the wrong people, to the wrong relationship, environment has got to be changed. Y'all gonna hear what I'm saying? Because environment is the thing that affects the growth. Uh, somebody say my old environment affected my growth. Uh, and environment affects your development. I am preaching up in here. That's why he said you came up in the wrong environment. Your house was a hellhole. Oh, y'all act like that ain't real. Because of the sin of Adam. But Adam, when you're born in the likeness of God, you create the likeness of his kingdom in the earth. I want to bore you now. Through image comes what we reflect. So if Adam's man of God is created in the image of God, then Adam reflects God. Can I give you a revelation? I'm ahead of myself. So, Satan, when he came after Adam, it was part two of the war in heaven. Because in, are y'all there? In heaven, Satan rose up against God's throne to take down God's throne with one third of the angels and God, revelation said, kick them out. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Because God said, there ain't going to be but one God here. So what happens before Adam even gets here, y'all ain't going to believe this, Satan was already here. Somebody say, prove it to me. Genesis 1 and 1. When God began to move in creation, he, he looked, he said, I looked on the face of the deep, the abyss, the darkness, the empty place. He said, a place of darkness. He said, and before God could move in creation, he spoke to the darkness. That was Satan. Because God is light. Now Satan's lights are out, so Satan is the prince of darkness. And so anywhere there's darkness, there is confusion and every evil work. And so God will never work anywhere where there is confusion.
and now oh, y'all getting quiet and every evil work wherever there's darkness you will not find God see that's why our church I had to get the church straight I don't care how much y'all shout and dance if you got darkness up in here you are not going to find God in the midst of darkness you're not going to see the favor of God in the midst of darkness you're not going to see God bless and raise you up in the midst of darkness he said, let it be. So when he came after Adam, it was a second war. Because Adam was a reflection. He was the lowercase God in the earth. Let's close. He was the lowercase God in the earth. He was the ruler of the earth. So Satan said, if I can't, think about him. If I can't rule heaven, y'all know God, Satan is a mastermind. He said, I'll rule the earth. God produces Adam after his likeness. I'm closing now. I really am. And puts him in there and says, have dominion. Take control. Subdue it. He said, work this ground. This ground is here. It'll work for you. But when you sin, come on here, and you rebel against the laws of God. I'm teaching the way of a transgressor is hard. What, what worked for you now is going to work against you. In other words, you the prosperity, everything is yours. Everything belongs to you. But when, come on here, you move out of position. Come on here. You you lost everything. Oh, Y'all ain't hear what I'm talking about. You trying to get a dime. You trying to get things met. But everything, all things are yours. All things belong to you. But it's in position. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Adam, I got to close as long as he walked in the life of God. The Zoe life of God. Everything that Adam needed it was there. The fruit was already on the tree. Oh, y'all on him without saying everything that he needed, the rivers were, the springs of water was springing. It was sweet water. Everything was uh, something to him. It wasn't no lions come on here growling and roaring at him. It wasn't no python snakes trying to destroy and bite him. Uh, it wasn't no creatures, double features. It was peace and harmony because Adam was in possession. You want to know where the blessing is? In your position. Yes. 